Hey everyone, welcome back. This is episode 3 where we are focusing on opening dialogue files and building ourselves a parsing system for our text files. Now we're going to keep it simple, splitting up into two parts. So in this episode, we're just focusing on reading the lines from a dialogue file into Unity so that way we can get things to start showing up. And in the next episode, we'll get into parsing and all that fun stuff. So what's the main objective here? Last we left off, last episode, we could create text and get it on screen using our text architect, and that's all fine and dandy, but you're just doing it manually through code right now. Like anything that you want to show up on screen, you have to type it inside of your scripts. Well, what we want to do is we want to make separate files specifically for dialog. And I'm calling these dialog files, but really they're just text files. They're whatever you would use to write out your script and and have that come up as what your characters are saying on the screen. So we need to make a system that's going to read those files, pull out all the lines, all the valid lines that is, maybe we'll ignore white space, maybe we'll ignore comments or whatever, but we need to pull out all the lines, get it into a list, and then get ourselves to where we can show it on screen. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Inside of our core folder, let's make another folder and call it IO, and this is going to handle our input and output. Inside of here, we're going to have two classes. The first one is going to be called file paths. And I like doing this because I like to have a central location where all my different file paths and directory paths are located. So if I want to reference a, a particular file or a particular location, I don't have it sprawled across a whole bunch of different scripts. I have it consolidated and brought into this one central location. Helps with organizing and changing things later on. Also, I want to create another c -sharp script, which will be our file manager, and this is actually going to handle the loading of the files. So let's go ahead and open these two bad boys up and get to coding. So inside file manager, this is not something I want to have attached to any kind of game object. If I want to load a file, all I want to do is reference the file manager class and then start loading. So let's get rid of mono behavior, and we'll get rid of start and update. And the only thing we're going to have are two static functions. Static so we can access them just from the class itself. It looks static. And what we're going to do is we're going to return a list of strings for files. But we're going to make this a, a method which is called read text file. And in here we want to specify ourselves a path. File path and then also a boolean as to whether we want to include blank lines or not. And by default, we're going to set that to true. Great. Okay, so we'll just return null right now. Ooh, that autocorrect got me. Let's remove files there, and uh, or autocomplete, rather. Okay, cool. So we've got ourselves one for text file, but there's another way that we can load and an asset in Unity with all our text, and that's through what's called a text asset. This is native to Unity, and it basically just represents a text file. So the, the purpose for having both of these is when we're loading from resources, resources is compiled with inside of Unity once you build the game. So you're not going to be able to reference file paths like you would inside of the inspector. You're going to need to reference the local path within resources and have resources loaded as a text object or asset rather but as long as you're in the editor you could load them from anywhere else inside of your assets folder if you wanted to or even outside of the unity project and you can still load outside of the unity project in um once you export the game but you just can't load from resources without using resources so this is might sound a little confusing to someone who's not worked with this before but basically, just follow along, we have ourselves a basic repeat of this function here. But instead of text file, we're going to say text asset. And we'll be doing the same thing. We'll be passing in a file path, but this is going to be referenced inside of resources where this is referenced as an absolute path. Okay, now here's where file paths comes in. For every file that I load, I want by default it to have a root location inside of Unity. So let's come into File Paths. Again, we'll remove Mono Behavior. We don't need that there. And I actually don't need any of that. We're just using strings. And I'm going to define a root path for my project. So I will make it a public static read-only string called root 
And this is going to equal a string which starts with our application.datapath and any files that I create or like configurations I want to read from, I'm going to have inside of a folder called game data. And what this does is basically takes the, the default path for whatever our application is. When we're inside of the Unity editor, it's going to be, this is going to be the assets folder. So this would be, if I'm working in Unity uh, editor, this is going to be assets game data. If I've already exported the game, then this is going to translate to the location of my executable file inside of the data folder for that executable. So it would be like uh, if I export something, uh, visual novel test, to be visual novel test data slash game data. Okay, simple enough. When we go into file manager, we can reference that. So I want to first check if I'm providing a relative or an absolute path here. So I'll do that by saying if file path dot starts with if it starts with a forward slash, then I'm re then I'm using an absolute path. If it does not start with that, then what I want to do is I want to say file path equals file paths dot root plus file path. So that way, if I'm not specifying an absolute path, I'm forcing it to be where my local files are. And now we just need to read all the lines that are in that file. So we could say a list of string is going to be our lines, and this will equal a new list. And as for how we're going to populate it, let's make sure we, let's create a try block and catch any kind of file not found exception as an EX error, basically. And if we do have an error, I'm going to say debug log error and I'll say something like file not found and then reference ex file name so that way I can go back and check maybe I've got bad spelling or what have you yeah like that's never happened to me before but we'll return the lines if we do get something so how do we get these lines what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a stream reader and we'll specify this inside of a using statement because once we're done with it we want it to go ahead and dispose of it properly and efficiently so our new stream reader is going to equal a new stream reader which opens the file at our file path and then we want to check while our sr is not at the end of stream so while we still have lines to read then we want to say string line equals string reader read line, but we want to check it first. Are we including blank lines or are we not? So if we're including blank lines, then we can go ahead and add the line. Or if we're not, then we want to make sure that string dot is null or white space line is false. And that gets us our data. So here we could go ahead and specify the path to one of our files. Why don't we go ahead and just show that in a testing script? Popping back in Unity, let's check it out. Everything compiles, we have no errors. That's always a good thing to see. Now let's come into our testing folder and let's make a new c -sharp script called test files. And you can see I've already got a file testing empty here, ready for this script. So let's drag that on there and let's start editing that. I want to define myself file name. So I want to open a file called test file txt. And when I start, I want to go ahead and start an I enumerator. And this will be called, we'll just call that run. Start coroutine run, because eventually I'm going to place the text architect in here and we're going to build strings from this testing coroutine. But for now, we'll just return null. But inside of here, I want to get the lines of my file. So let's string lines equals file manager dot read text file. And let's pass in the file name and we'll go ahead and include the blank lines 
And so for each string line in lines, debug.log line. So basically, for we read the file, and for every line we find, we log it to the console. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So first of all, we don't have a way of creating our directory uh, by script yet, so go ahead and make yourself a directory that you specified earlier. Like I said, mine is in assets, game data, and inside of game data, I've got a text file here, and you'll notice we've got some dialogue here. So let me go ahead and run, and let's see what happens. I get an error down at the bottom saying, file not found. And that's good, because that means our try and catch block didn't work. So why did that happen for me? Well, my script says I need to open testfile.txt, whereas in my project, I have textfile.txt. So let me change this now to s, test file, and now let's see what happens. There we go. That's different. So now we get the lines. I've got every line in that file, including the blank one. And there, I've got it collapsed, so they showed on top of each other. There we go. That's every line. Now let's do this, but let's remove any blank lines. Once more. There we go. And now I get all the lines except for the ones that are blank. So that's how we load a text file from basically any path. But let's go ahead and do this with a text asset now. So with the text asset, it's basically the same thing, but we want to try to load it from resources instead. So if we're getting the text asset here, let's try to load that from resources. Text asset, then asset equals resources dot load. And what do we want to load it as? We want to load it as a text asset. And then where do we want to load it from? Our file path. Okay, so we should have a text asset from that line. But if we don't, it's going to return it as null. So if our asset is null, then I want to use debug.log error. And say asset not found. Followed by, followed by the file, and then return null. On the other hand, if we did find a file, then it's time to read it. But let's make ourselves a variant of the read text asset function. Public static list string read text asset call it the exact same thing only instead of a file path what we're going to take is an actual text asset component and we'll still choose to include blank lines and set that as default to true and once we have our asset let's go ahead and call that variant read text asset and pass in the asset that we have loaded as well as the option to include the lines or not But let's not forget to return that value. So what do we do in here? Basically the same thing we did for read text file. We need to specify ourselves a list string for the lines. Make that a new list. And then once again, we're going to have something to read it. But instead of a stream reader, what we're going to use is a string reader. And the reason for that is our text asset already has an array of lines, or it already has, not an array, but a solid line which has all of the lines in it. It's just one massive string. And we will call this a, we'll set it equal to new string reader with our asset dot text, which is all the text inside of that text asset component. And then we want to say wall sr.peak is greater than negative one. What this basically means is we're peaking to see if we have a line available. If we do, then we're going to go ahead and read the next line. But if it returns us negative one, then it basically means we're at the end of the file kind of like our end of stream up there. So 
let's grab this text because that we can use and paste that in here. And once we're done, we will return the lines. There we go. So that allows us to read both a text file from a path and load something from resources or pass in a text asset directly. So let's change up this testing script for a bit. I'm going to change this to actually, no, I'm going to leave test file there. And I'm going to take off the extension because when you're loading something from resources, you do not specify the file extension. You only specify the name. Otherwise, it can't find it. I don't know the exact reason for that, but I know it doesn't work. I've never bothered to look into why, but now that I say that, I'm curious, and I will probably do that after the video. And the only thing we want to change here is we want to read the text asset by that file name. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and try that. In order for me to do this, I need to move this file into my resources folder. There we go. So now I have the text file. Let's go ahead and try that now. And I get a null reference error. So what's this error saying? It's saying object reference is not set to the instance of an object. So that means it probably did not get my asset. Okay. And here's my problem. I didn't put the double equal sign. I had the assignment operator instead of the checking if it was equal to null or not. And now let's try that one more time. And there we go. It loads everything. So what's the difference between this and loading text file? If you're using it in this manner, absolutely nothing. But there's another way that we can use text files or text assets, and that is much, much better. Uh, better for testing purposes, really, uh, which is what we'll be doing a lot of in here. So if we come into our file testing script, what we can do is change this from a string to a text asset instead. And then just make sure that we serialize the field so we can assign it. And we'll be passing in the asset to the read text asset, which will just bypass loading it from a file path and read it directly, which means in the engine, we could take a text file from anywhere and pop it in there as long as it's within the Unity project. And then we can easily swap out text files. We can easily swap it out just from the editor and then load it and read it just like this. And that will come in handy once we start working with different dialogue files and you want to swap them out and try working with different ones without having to go in and change your code. You could just change the variable. So that's it. That lets us load our dialogue files, but you'll notice that one thing is it's, well, obviously not going to our text architect on screen. We haven't sent it to the architect, um, but also it's loading each line as a single string, which we want to be able to separate our speaker name, in this case, John, uh, from his dialogue, which is hello world. We want to change it to where we can parse the line that's ripped from the file and get the appropriate data from it. But to do that, we need to build a little parsing system. It's not going to be as simple as just splitting it by quotation marks because there's going to be a lot more data to our dialogues lines than that. But I'm going to end this episode here so that way we keep on topic. And in the next episode, we're going to focus on building the parsing system. So hope you enjoyed, hope this helps, and I'll see you then.